it's Xena Warrior Princess on the ocean vibes. I am here for sea Xena. Hey guys, so I've decided that I'm going to do a reading vlog for a couple different reasons and I'll get into that in a minute. But the main book I want to talk about in this vlog is The Adventures of Alamina El Sarafi by Shannon Shukarborty. And I am currently also reading Are You Listening by Tilly Walden. I am 100 pages into each of these. As you can see, there is a definite page count difference. And I have a book review for this author's other book uh, on my channel if you'd like to check that out. But the main book I want to talk about is this one. So as you know, I typically do spoiler-free reviews, and that is because I don't want to ruin a book for someone that wants to watch my videos. But I also want to talk more about my thoughts on things as I read them. So hence the vlog. Okay, what are we doing here? The main thing we know about Alamina is that she used to be a pirate, and she was a really cutthroat pirate, but also an extremely sneaky pirate. She could get into places, steal things, and leave before anybody knew about it, which is super, super cool. Another thing that I'm really liking about this, our main character is an older female. She's probably in her 40s, she has a daughter that's like 10, and I'm really, really loving that. Most of the time, fantasy novels that have women in it at all that are like the main characters they're teenagers and it, well a lot of fantasy follows teenage teenagers and I just I can't with teenagers I'm an adult I end up wanting to mother the kid or smack them upside the back of their head and tell them they are making really bad decisions they need to tighten up so this rich woman comes in on a palanquin as they do and she says hey Alamina I know who you are I need you to do me a favor and she says you don't know who I am go away and she's thinking, I could kill this woman, which I was just like, fair. But then she's like, you can't kill me because I have letters getting ready to go out to your enemies if I don't come home. And by the way, I have these letters. I know who you are. My son served on your ship, which Alamina was like, oh, crap. And I was over here also like, oh, crap. So when she asked her what she wanted, and then you come to find out that the woman's granddaughter is missing, I was like, oh, no, is this going to be just like a search and rescue mission type of thing? And then you find out that the man who took her is a collector of sorts. Like, he's been around just taking people's stuff and collecting people's things. But now he's collecting people, I guess. And the man is someone that nobody really wants to deal with because he is a Frank, which back then is what they called Christians. He has fought on both sides of the war, so he has a lot of blood on his hands. So he's kind of crazy. And I'm here for that as far as our, our main uh, villain goes. But... I worry about it. So our main character says, absolutely not. And the rich lady said, I'll give you a million dinars. That's a lot of money. If you know anything about Xena Warrior Princess, that is one of, that is the currency that they used. And this lady is C. Xena. She's tall, she's uh, broad, she's kind of threatening, but sexy. Ugh. I'm, I'm here for Alamina. I'm so here for her. Then after that, she goes and gets her, like, she goes and gets the, the gang back together for her crew, which I thought was extremely easy, and I did not appreciate that. It was way, way too easy. You did get backstory into two of her friends, which she hasn't seen in 10 years, and she gets her shit back. It was just all too easy, and it felt very fast. Was there some turmoil? Yes. Was there a little bit of adventure to it? Yes. Did she have to go through some things to get at least one of them back? Yes. But it was annoying because it was just too much, too easy. So now I'm worried that the book itself will be, it'll just, it'll just be one easy task for her after another. Like there's going to be no real danger. But I'm really excited to see where it goes. I will continue making updates as I go. I've read 100 pages, like I said, so I might end up doing just a check-in every 100 pages. Hi, me a little while later. One thing I actually forgot is that her child's father is a demon. Doesn't explain what kind of demon or how he was a demon, but they were, I think they might've been in love or they might've been married. But he had this power that he, he could get feelings, and the daughter, I guess, has this as well. But everything that's gone on in just this many pages, however many pages this is, nothing that she has planned has gone, gone the way she wanted it to. And that's promising. I'm really excited. I'm also really excited about the magic system, because I don't know how it's going to work yet. 
I like a magic system in one of two ways. One, thoroughly explained and I can understand it and there's almost scientificness behind it. Or two, it is vague, but vague enough to where it's tangible. I know what it is, but it's almost like some religious miracles in our societies today to where it's there, you can see it, but you have no idea how it got there. There, that's where I'm at. It's the next day, and I have read to page 196, and I know I said I would do it every 100 pages, but chapter ends. I, does anybody else do that? Can you have to, you have to either stop on an even number page or stop where a chapter begins. Is anybody else like that or is it just me? There was a really cool scene that drew me in very well where Amina finds her friend who she'd been looking for. He's the one taking care of her ship in her stead, taking over and being the captain. And she finds him and he's getting arrested and so is the rest of his crew and they plundered the ship and took all their crap out of there, which sucks for them. But she has to go in and save them from doom and gloom and being imprisoned and murdered. And it was fantastic. The way they did it was fun and a little funny at times. I chuckled a couple times and I loved every moment of that. But other than that, nothing in the story is super compelling to me yet. I feel like being, you know, basically halfway, almost halfway into the book, there should be more by now. But I think it's because I'm reading it in the mindset of it's a standalone, and it's probably not. She's known for her series. So I'm trying to get that out of my head so I can enjoy it more. There's no magic yet, though, and I feel like there should be at least something. So I'm a little let down about that. But I'm going to either read more tonight or tomorrow. It just depends on when I have time. So I will update you when I get there. Not there yet. But good morning. <laughs> I'm off today, so my plan is to spend the entire day reading and I need to clean some things and do laundry, but the main bulk of my day will be reading. I'm gonna get up and do things and get down to it. <laughs> He's just back there very interested in what I'm doing. Oh, scratch. So I have finished my breakfast and Are You Listening by Tilly Walden. This book was this book was a lot. This book was so much. I really enjoyed it. Tilly Walden has yet to disappoint me. We have two main characters, our adult main character who is 27 who is going to see her aunt. She's mourning the loss of her mother. She's just not a happy camper. She's got a lot of depression and anxiety. And then we have our teenage character who is, I believe, 17, if I remember correctly. And she has run away from home. She doesn't want to deal with the nonsense that's going on at home. And then we have our cat, who is a cat. But this cat is a smart cat. Our adult main character is going to visit her aunt. She's going on a road trip. She just happens to stumble upon the runaway uh, daughter of a friend of hers. And is like, let's just come with me. You can't be by yourself. So when they find this cat, it's all like, it's just at the beginning, I was just like, is this just a, just a road trip story with a cat? No, there are people trying to get the cat, trying to take the cat. But the cat is from a town that nobody knows where it is and nobody can find. So it was just, it was a lot. And there was one point in the story in the town that nobody can find, 
obviously they found it. Well, one of them found it. You see this other character and she tells this teenage character, you know, you'll be here again. And I was like, is that her? Is that her from the future? Is this one of those loop things where they're just, they're just going to keep being there for their younger selves? The book was a lot. It was heavy. It was heavy at times, which you wouldn't really expect from the way the beginning of the story went. I really, really enjoyed it. And I think I'm going to go ahead and pick up the adventures of Al Alamina al Saraki now. Holy crap, there's magic now. And I'm very excited. I'm happy with how things are going. I am on page 298, which is chapter 20. I am so happy. There, we've, we've seen the magic. We've known, we learned about the demon. We got to see some pretty gross, gruesome things, which was, which was, which was awesome. Since we spoke last, they have made it to an island where they found a cut in half ship. And when I saw that, and when they, there was teeth in the hull of the ship. So my, my prediction is that they're going to meet up with whatever that thing is. And it's going to either A, you know, split their, her, their boat in half and murder them. I think it's, hold on. I think it's whatever this is. Because it was mentioned. The animal, the creature was mentioned at one point. So I think that's probably going to murder a lot of people. Um, I feel like that the the ship is going to be capsized or broken. Something really cool that I love in books and movies is the title. Now the title for this book is in between 263 and 264, like the ending of one and the beginning, uh, The Adventures of Elamina Asarafi. Our demon is the one who said these things because he was trying to get her to uh, let him let him have a contract with her. So what it seems like is that our demon is an actual demon and that in language then and now, we don't have a word for what he is. But he has the persona of, of a man. He looks like a human man, but he also doesn't quite look like a human man. He's, he's tangible, but he's also kind of a shadow. But when he loses that facade, he is this grotesque, like, bluish green uh human flesh for hair or like well fleshy hair uh striped fanged monstrosity and i was hoping it would be something cool like that so that's pretty cool and his abilities are about sort of like having feelings and having luck like he's offering her luck so that's how they end up together is that he wants to sleep with her and she wants to sleep with him. And she's like, I don't lay with people that are not my husband. And he's like, what? That's cool. I can do that. Is that a contract? Is that a binding contract? Can you take me away from here? Because it doesn't seem like he can go anywhere. Like he can't go anywhere without a contract. So that part was actually the past. So where we are now is that they ended up on this island where you can tell it's inhabited, but they can't find anybody. They don't hear anything. They don't hear any animals or any people. And then when they finally do find the town, they find the, these rotting corpses of these old people that have been, you know, staked into a tree, which sounds awful. But they were sacrifices, which is awesome, awful death, grueling, painful. You're just clinging to death at that point, just waiting for it to happen to end your misery. But that is also where she finds her husband again. And he's like, I could feel you. There's a bond. And my first thought was, you guys have a daughter together and you don't know, which is what she admitted, which is why they're probably still connected. But he doesn't know about the daughter. So my prediction is that when he finds out about his daughter, he is going to, oh, I have a child. That's why. And he'll probably either want to take her under his wing and show her how to be whatever half demon she is or he's gonna want to murder her so he can be disconnected from Alamina. I wasn't expecting to enjoy finding out about uh, their past together and how they got together but I did that's my favorite part of the book so far. The only thing so far that I love more is when Alamina meets the Frank because she was expecting him to be this disgusting monstrous man and he's just a regular dude except he has he has minions that are part of his crew that have come along with him, not because they wanted to, but because he called up from the depths of the ocean this thing to come kill the people who didn't want to go with him, which is why his ship was dilapidated and broken. She's asking him, like, where is the girl? And he's like, oh, she she left. She bounced. 
Um, but if she came back to me, I would forgive her because she's she's a teenager and we can we can get over this. Like that's okay. But he he's got he's got men that he's given powers to where he, they can like tie tie uh, metal into knots and glow see in the dark and, and stuff like that. So he's pretty intense. So because Alamina doesn't want to join him and doesn't want her them to use her ship, he poisons her and tries to put her in a pit with these weird things and basically be able to track her and control her. But thankfully she was saved. So that is that is a plus. So now now we're going. One thing that I'm really enjoying is that Alamina breaks the fourth wall a lot and it sounds like she's filming a podcast and she'll just turn around and be like, are you sure you want me to say that? Well, we got to get into that. So let me tell you this story. But she's talking to someone behind her or around her and you at the same time. And then she'll go about telling the story. I'm super, super enjoying that. So I'm going to continue on. And I could probably finish this today, honestly. I think I'm in awe. I'm done. And wow, what a ride, right? Okay, the the title of this book is The Adventures of Amina Al-Sarafi. The adventure part? I don't really know where to start, so I'm just going to kind of jump into my own thoughts. The most notable thing that happens besides the fact that the Frank comes with his big sea demon thing and, like, kills a bunch of her crew members and throws her off her own ship. She survives by sheer frickin' luck. She plunges into the water, loses consciousness, she's been stabbed, and her clothes just happen to catch something in the ocean that keeps her from drowning. Eventually she gets up on it. Oh, she fights off a shark. And she ends up on this island with weird creatures, um, a cow. It sounds like it's an actual cow crossed between a yellow spotted lizard from holes and an actual manatee. Well, fun fact, it was cute and she liked it and then it got eaten by a weird pink mist in the water. While she's on the island, she meets her husband because he jumped ship out of self-preservation, but she eats and drinks the environment, the water, the food, and she becomes supernaturally strong. So she is forever changed. She has these mystical, magical powers. But then she gets hauled in front of the council of the inhabitants that I forget their names right now, but <laughs> they're kind of like people, but like bird people. They, they don't like her because she's a human and they try to, they just, they put her down a chute to try to kill her. This other bird guy is like, hey, I'm going to help you. But that whole thing to me was just, I was like, this is the science fiction, supernatural, historical fiction that I was looking for. This is what I was waiting for. My favorite thing about her having powers is not just the fact that she's super strong, but she can see things like jinns and spirits. She can see the supernatural tethers holding the men and the beasts to the frank. And having that power to see what should be unseen is going to play a really big part in this series and I'm here for it. And the ending battle was fantastic. The way that our 16 year old survivor slash runaway Dunya just flips the script on the Frank and oh, it was so, so good. But my absolute favorite thing that we find out is that Dunya runs away because she doesn't want to get married. But the reason she doesn't want to get married is because she's not like other girls. She doesn't feel like a girl. And she decides to stay aboard the ship with Elamina and the crew and go by male names and male pronouns. And it was just, the inclusion there was just, mm, it was so, so good. And that's it. I'm giving this book five stars. I hope she writes quickly. I did read her afterward and she said she started writing this in 2020. It is 2023. It's just come out. So I feel like if we're going to get a sequel, it's going to be no time soon, which I will have to reread this again. <laughs> but that's okay. I really, really enjoyed it. If you've made it this far, thanks. And I want to know how you feel about it. Let me know. Bye.